Welcome back to the Mid-Atlantic Sports Report here on Master. The Orioles have signed Dexter Fowler, the switching outfielder, to a three-year, $33 million contract last season with the Chicago Cubs. 250 batting average, 17 home runs, 46 RBIs, and 20 stolen bases. Of course, the Cubs made postseason play in the uh, National League. And right now, we're going to go to... Sarasota, Florida, where he's doing some curls for girls at the gym right now. Rock Kabatko, we interrupted his workout for a few comments. And Rock, what, what did you think last night when you broke the story about Dexter Fowler? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. The Orioles aren't confirming anything at this point. That probably has something to do with uh, the mess right now with Gallardo. But they did reach agreement with, with Fowler. Three years and a report is $33 million. I saw, I heard around 35 So 33 is around 35 so we'll, we'll go with that. And he's expected to take his physical tomorrow. But, again, the club's not saying anything. Meanwhile, Adam Jones said he's already talked to Fowler. He's excited to come here. He was on his way to Sarasota. So we knew that part of it's done. But as you guys know, nothing is official until they pass the physical. <laughs> Rock, what about, um, what about the addition of speed in a non-base percentage guy? The Orioles are known for their power. But what will this do for the lineup? How much more dangerous will it make it? Extremely. And there were some guys talking about that today, just how, you know, top to bottom now, how dangerous it is. And Adam Jones said he's actually done about 10 mock lineups now with different guys in it. And he obviously had Fowler batting leadoff. And he was like, you know, he had himself anywhere from second to third to fourth to fifth. I mean, you know, you start talking about the excitement of having a guy like Trumbo in the D8 spot. And guys are saying you could have a J.J. Hardy or Johnson Scope batting ninth now and how impressive that is. So, yeah, Fowler makes a big difference. And even though Buck Showalter is not going to comment on Fowler until the deal's official, and I said something to him about how nice is that 363 career on base percentage, he just raised his eyebrows. <laughs> like, yeah, that, that would come in handy in a lineup that, you know, there's enough home run power there, but you need guys to get on base. And every winter they vow that they're going to improve the on base percentage. And up to this point, there were just the unknowns of, of Kim and Ricard, the Rule 5 kid, and you don't know how that's going to translate to the majors. Well, here's a guy proven – who's done it year after year, able to get on base and set the table. And then it's pretty exciting to think about, you know, it's the guys hitting behind them. You know, two words that started to make fans in Birdland cringe rock, and that's pending physical. Any updates on Giovanni Gallardo? Yeah, at this point, uh, I'm just hearing different things. I mean, I I don't expect any decision to come down tonight. I was told he he did have uh, more tests run after they, they looked at the MRI on his shoulder and had some concerns. They've got the results. They're reviewing them. I've heard multiple people say there are at least discussions about maybe trying to restructure the deal. Now, I talked to somebody else today who made it seem like the MRI was fine. It's really not that bad. He expects the deal to get done. So we we're just really in a holding pattern here. I know that's frustrating for fans who want answers. It's frustrating for the media, too. We like to be able to report definitively one way or the other and kind of move on from it. But honestly, every couple hours I have a different feel for what's going to happen. And I, I was convinced. When I left the complex yesterday, there was no way that this uh, was going to get done. This deal was going to fall apart. And then all of a sudden, I started feeling a little more optimistic about it. And then, you know, I'm just flip-flopping both ways. But I know there are a lot of players in the clubhouse who are tracking this and who are upset about it because they want them on the team. They got all excited about it. And they felt like the car, the rug was kind of pulled out from under them. But, oh, never mind, it may not happen. And, you know, they, they know what the perception is with the Orioles and their physicals, even though, as I reminded people in the blog today, they're usually right when they failed guys or tried to restructure a deal. And you've seen what's happened after that. Balfour, Seeley, uh, Xavier Hernandez, guys like that, Tyler Colvin. So they're usually right about these things. But still, there is that perception that, God, the Orioles' physical is a lot tougher than anybody else's. And I had one pitcher say, look, how are you going to get anybody else to want to sign here if they're worried about passing the physical? But, of course... We heard the same thing after the Balfour debacle, and they're still able to sign guys. Rock, is this the toughest thing because of this? With the HIPAA rules, the club can't actually say this is the problem when you're talking about another person's health and and, and injuries or or MRIs and X-rays and all this stuff. So, is that the toughest thing when you hear different people quoting and and stating things as fact when you actually know? Well, wait a minute. There's no actual facts out there yet, really, because. Nobody's actually able to talk about it, you know, when, when you start going on the record anyway. Right. You have to rely on people talking off the record. And that's why it was a little bit strange after the Balfour thing broke, where you had team physicians from outside the organization that were commenting on it openly and talking about, you know, MRIs that they've seen and this and that. And I'm thinking, should you even be discussing this? I mean, first of all, you're, you're outside the organization and you're talking about this guy's medicals. 
And you're right, there are laws against that. So, you know, the Orioles are, you know, understandably, they're very cautious about what they're going to say, and they understand what they can and can't say. And, you know, Buck today, even talking about Fowler, let alone Gallardo, he's like, and this is a sensitive time right now. So they're being very careful. And plus, let's face it, if something happens with Gallardo, there's a possibility of a grievance being filed. You really do have to be careful what you say publicly on top of that. There are just a lot of different reasons why they're probably better off just not saying anything. Even though it's a reporter, you'd like to actually get more answers. You kind of wish it'd be more open. I totally understand why they're being cautious. Okay, it's pure speculation, Rock, but if the Gallardo uh, deal doesn't go down, is there a plan B for the O's? You know, it seems more likely now that they would just go in-house. And we were talking about this today, too. It's like, what kind of options are still out there? And people say, what about Tim Lincecum? Well, if Gallardo, who's an adorable guy with no history of arm trouble at all, can't pass this physical. Is Tim Lincecum going to pass it? Or is anybody else in that free agent list who's left these one-year bounce-back guys, are they going to be able to pass it? I don't think they were convinced those sister was going to be able to, and that's why they ended up passing on him, even though they had some interest. I would think they would probably just figure we may as well just, you know, have the open auditions. Is it Worley? Is it Wright? Is it Wilson? Whomever. Stanye, And just let those guys fight it out. Now, I could be wrong about this, but to me, it just there doesn't seem to be many appealing options left in free agency, and certainly not guys that you'd be comfortable with taking a physical here. Well, Rock, as always, we appreciate the information. Enjoy the conversation. Look forward to uh, chatting with you before the week is out as you continue to cover the Orioles spring training in Sarasota. Thanks, guys. My arms are cramping up. I need to get inside. <laughs> <laughs> Rock Cabanco in Sarasota, Florida, doing a few curls and check him out on massesports.com, School of Rock, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. You know, you can begin your morning as soon as you wake up. He's always got something fresh with yeah. her from about 5 o'clock on. So.